a guy here that had a Honeywell Prestige IAQ set up. Somebody put this unit in about eight years ago. Two stage, two heat, heat pump, dual fuel package unit. But that thermostat, it was the old Prestige, about eight years old, is not Wi-Fi. So he wanted a Wi-Fi thermostat. So he went and bought a Honeywell thermostat. He wanted us to put it in. Not realizing there was a relay panel or whatever under the house. Anyway, he's got the unit. Unit wired up. and So I got all that wiring done in the crawl space. Got that panel out. But the thermostat he did, that he bought, it's a Honeywell 985 or whatever it is. TX985, something like that. Wi-Fi. It looks like the Prestige, but it's Wi-Fi. And it doesn't allow you to select an option for fuel backup heating. So, these train systems are stupid. The package unit. You would think that when the package unit gets a call for the gas heat to come on, it would drop out the compressor. But it does not. So they run together at the same time. So, I'm putting a mechanical thermostat in so that when the thermostat in the house is calling for the heat pump, It'll send a Y here, and then when the temperature drops, it'll just reroute that signal over here and run our furnace and drop the compressor out. But this unit, and I've seen it on a couple of other ones, and it just amazes me that if you have a package unit and you know it's dual fuel, that you're going to have a control board programmed and set up that if you get a call for the gas furnace it's going to cut the compressor off but it does not do that now our draft motor is coming on and this thing's going to fire off and it's going to run the furnace and the heat pump at the same time which means you're going to overheat the thing limit switches and all that stuff you think train would be smart enough to know that when you get a call for the ga damn gas furnace to run, there you go, that it would shut the compressor off. But, train's stupid. And there's no way to change that and fix that. So I've got to put this switch in to break that cycle so that when it gets below 40 degrees is what he wants to set it at it runs off the furnace and not the outdoor unit so I'm gonna put a two pole switch in I'm gonna run wire through the normally closed on that switch to the compressor when the temperature drops that switch is gonna to move to the other terminal turn the outdoor unit turn the compressor off and then run the furnace so let's get that wired up this is wired up right works right once this thing's been in this cold water for a little while it should switch over uh, running uh, still dealing with what I'm dealing with <laughs> leaves and acorns I don't have the acorns I've got the sycamore in the front yard so I've got the big leaves yeah. huge tree but I've got those ball whatever those things yeah, are I get them on my corner over there yeah. 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 Oh, man. So, whenever my son uh, got on my case, I'd send him out there to go pick up my money. <laughs> yeah, I was little. I got, when I was in high school, my junior year, I came home a little bit tipsy one night. My mom made me get out. We had the yard was fenced in in the back. They'd cut the grass. This is in the summer, too. That was the worst time to do it. And then she made me, with a large pair of scissors, trim the grass around the bottom of the fence. Didn't do that again. <coughs> So basically it's running our heat pump signal right now from the thermostat on this white wire or the yellow or Y. And it was directly, those two were directly connected straight. So now I'm just breaking that with this switch. I've got it set at 40 degrees. And if it switches on temperature drop, it's just going to take that signal from that wire and send it to this one, which is going to start your furnace up. And it'll shut the compressor off like it's supposed to. I would think these units 
and I checked it a while ago, it's like the newer ones too. You would think when they do a dual fuel system set together, the, the, the brains in the control board would know on its own that when it gets a call for the furnace to shut this off, but it doesn't. Yeah. So that's, that, that's a train thing. I don't, the new ones don't even do that. So. Yeah, I, like, I mean, that's, you know, when, I, when, when I chose this unit, I chose it because of the dual fuel. I like yeah. It, yeah. Yeah, that's a good upgrade option if you're trying to save on the gas and stuff like that. So then you go with electric uh, strips. Okay, so let's, let's see how long it takes this thing to switch. There we go. Now your furnace is going to be So that's what we were looking to accomplish was them not running together. And that's that. Typically when you see those relay panel sections like that, it's typically going to be because there wasn't enough thermostat wire to tie the therm I knew a thermostat that had everything there. You wouldn't have enough wire to wire it all in, so you just end up putting those relay panels and stuff like that on it. Um, there are thermostats that do it, but you have to have a, a, typically a 10 wire thermostat wire. If you're going to start tying an outdoor sensor and then two stages of cooling and heating on a heat pump compressor and then two stages of the gas. It takes a lot of them. They all, as you can see, have their own individual wire. So it's, you know, it's unfortunate. I guess it's just look at those. So we keep those T6s, but not all the T6s we're doing. There's certain models of the T6 series that will do that in some way. That set at 30, right by about 38 degrees. We should be good with that. But yeah, and that's another thing. All they have to do is really just turn it on and heat. Come out here and put that in a cup of ice. As soon as the temperature drops, it'll switch over to the furnace. And then they can check their pressures that way. That would be the simplest way to do it, as it's intended to operate. But you can jump it out. Yeah, you know, you're out here on a really warm day. Go back under here, do you? No, I'm good. I don't have to go back under there. Helicopter. Helicopter. At least he did leave me alone for a few minutes. I'm going to put a wire nut on that. He's closing the cross space door. So. Oh. Let's anyway. So now this W wire that we were using for your furnace is not used anymore. And then I'm going to disconnect it from the thermostat. That's connected to the terminal in there that was going to be used for the auxiliary purpose. But it just blows my mind that this that, that control wouldn't be set up to know that if it gets a call for heating for the furnace, they don't need to run together. Just got to shut that down on its own and it Whatever reason it doesn't, and the newer ones do don't don't either. Best of my knowledge, the one I worked on yesterday didn't. So, um, so I'm gonna go back in there. I'm gonna turn the auxiliary function off or the backup heat function off on the thermostat, and that will be pretty much it. A lot of wires in here. Be careful.
Then they give you a bigger box. <laughs> the box is big enough. Yeah. With the whole container, you think they would have a place for Yeah, just a little, another half inch this way and another inch that way would be, would be nice. That door is rounded. It's not going to pinch them. I just don't know. Are you a train proponent? Sure. I think there's better units out there. Are they all the same? Oh, do I train or something else? Uh, predominantly trained because I work on a lot of them. See, I'm all, I know them kind of like the back of my hand kind of a thing. 13, 14 years straight working here. That's all we put in. I see a lot of everything else too, but. Uh, I'd put them at the top and give them an A rating. Wouldn't give them an A plus, wouldn't give them an A minus. And that's that's just, to be honest, anything now. The, the, the days of the old relays and switches and units that would run 30 years are gone. <laughs> it seems like they're all the same and they just put different labels on them and they all make it the same Well, place. no. Um, well, train is trained in American standard. They're, they're the same thing. They're made same place. Um, carrier's different. That's ICP. That's another manufacturer. And you got Daikin, which is Goodman and Amana now. Um, Marine Rudd. So, I mean, it's kind of like car manufacturers. They're different, different manufacturers. They all have the same stuff. They just make it look different, sound different. And, you know, it's... But, I mean, but across the board with all manufacturers, quality is not... Quality is not what it used to be. That's the way with everything now. It's all replaceable in a few years. Yeah, well, I mean, I think the manufacturers have caught on to the to the fact that if, if they make something that lasts 20 to 25 years, they're not making a lot of money if they're only replacing somebody's unit every 25 years. But it also has to do with manufacturing, yeah. Everything in this unit is made in probably seven or eight different countries. And it, but it's assembled here, but it's coming from everywhere else. Quality control standards. From why I hate, I'd hate to have that guy's job, the train or a carrier or a car manufacturer, trying to maintain your standards in another company, country where they don't have regulations that really well, care about any that of that stuff. That's my job because I spent a lot of time yeah. in China. So, <laughs> so it's. Uh, so, I mean, it's, it is what it is, I mean, it's, we'll try, yeah, but I'd say above all the other like, train, they, they do a better job of supporting their their dealers that are selling their equipment and installing it if they need help, or well, one thing I'll tell if you they have you, problems, things like that, so. You guys have done a better job than that. Uh, well, that's the name is on there. Oh, CCA over here? Yeah, we uh. <laughs> they were good when I first started working with them, but then they customer service and they text you. Yeah, they're not, they don't have the best <laughs> reputation. I won't get into a whole lot about, it was actually about our background with them. It was actually my neighbor over here because they <laughs> use you. And I saw your truck over there when I talked yeah. to them. Yeah. Yeah, so he recommended I go talk to you guys. So. That's good. But yeah, they, they're uh. <laughs> They're hit and miss. We've had a long road of them. Yeah, they installed this one. Especially out there. here. We've put a lot of we've gone behind them a lot out here with some of their installs. And not really being very supportive once they get the work done and wanting to come back after that warranty period's over and have a whole lot to do with you. So anyway. Yeah, they are. They, they, do, they do a good job. I don't know if you wanted to keep that box or not. It's just a box. No. Keep the actually keep that. You have that. Whatever your paperwork is. But are you all good to go? Um, oh, let me get back in there and turn that auxiliary heat function off on that thermostat. He's talking about those guys. Appreciate you watching.